Welcome to G3 Investors. We trade ETFs using G3's systematic trend trading approach. In this week's video, we will review the markets year to date through May 27th. Well, the NASDAQ gained 6.8% for the week, ending a seven week losing streak. That's the longest losing streak since 2001. The NASDAQ corrected over 30%. And the May low was 11,036. It has recovered almost 10%, but is still down 22.5%. The S&P 500 gained 6.6 .6 for the week, also ending a seven week uh, losing streak. The S&P's January to May correction was 20.6%. And last week, it had a brief visit to bear market territory before recovering 9% of its loss this week, but it's still down 12.8%, so we're still in a correction. Our model has 19 long positions, uh, 14,000 in unrealized gains. It's 85% invested, and our, our trade risk is a positive $6,900. The model has gained over 20, well, almost 20.5%, yeah, 20.5% here for the month, of May through the 27th and 73.5 percent uh, year to date and you can see here that we are beating our benchmark comparisons which is the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ by uh, big amounts both on a month basis and year-to-date basis okay let's take a look at some charts this is a mountain chart if you will and showing the of the NASDAQ composite index showing the, the, the mega phone chart that I identified back in January of 2018 and you can see where we went up and now we're coming down the right side of the mountain and uh, we've, we've stopped right here short of this 200 uh, monthly or weekly sorry the 200 weekly average and, and it looked like just a bounce to me at this point in time. I still think we're headed lower. I don't think it's going to start happening until after we get through the month end close and the holiday weekend. Um, that's just typical. So if we look at, and all these charts will be very similar. This is a six month chart of the NASDAQ composite index. And you can see it's a nice move here. So while we, we are in an uptrend mode, we're, we're still in, inside of a correction. And we can get big gains. We had big gains on Friday. So that's good. And uh, all the charts, the blue is the 50-day moving average. The red and is the 200-day moving ad, average. And these are just guides. But uh, I do want to look at the S&P 500 in, index. And again, nice move here off this bottom and so now I want to turn and I want to look at you know our 19 open positions so let's take a look at uh, let's start out by looking at we have 12 positions in the various ETF sectors so I'm just going to go down in order it's going to be quick uh, the only difference on the chart if it's a green dotted line that's where we have our position so this is this is the uh, semiconductor index and we have we got we took it a position at 235 and it, it closed at 245.60 so we've got a nice gain going on that one I love trading the semiconductors when the semiconductors and the and technology sectors leading the market as they are right now things are very good on the long side this is the financial sector again you can see our position nice nice move off this bottom but still hasn't even recovered its 50-day moving average and is quite a ways away from the 200-day moving average. XLK is the technology sector. Excuse my French there. And we've got a nice gain going in that one as well. Of course, we can't forget the energy companies, ExxonMobil. Now, this is, this is one of the strongest ETFs out here. You can see it's above the 50 day is above the 200 day and and all the action is remaining above its 50 day and we've made a boatload of money on energy the energy sector this year xly that is consumer discretionary 
really bad looking chart but it broke up off the bottom and so you can see how our reversing system works we, we have a little I call them hockey sticks uh, reverse hockey stick and when it goes up and it it gets above this congestion here then we take a position in this case at 149 okay XLV uh, kind of neutral but what you know hey look we just got a bell on this one we got right above the, the we closed above the right on the 50 day and just a little bit above the, the 200 day moving average so that one is I'm neutral on that one I couldn't get excited but you know I'm not supposed to get excited in trading I'm supposed to be professional <laughs> we'll try that your on your own okay this is XLI the industrials and we don't go very far without the industrials and its companion the materials XLB and and that chart is above so that's a good move there because we're above both the 200 day and the 50 day and then X RT and that's the sales retail sales and that looks pretty weak but it did pump up above this congestion down here and so we took a position in it IYR real estate not real strong chart but it's it's a good move off the bottom again so we took a position in that one XME here's another strong sector metals and mining well shouldn't say it's real strong but it, it, it stayed above its 200 day it did it's living below its 50 day here but you know it, it's making a nice move above, above this little consolidation here so we took a position in that one as well and last but not least for for the ETF sectors where we have positions is is housing so it's, it's a really ugly chart but again we got above all this congestion here right in here and so we took a, a position at 61 so 61 bucks now let's turn we have positions in the indices or the index we trade the, the QQQ which is the NASDAQ 100 it represents very if I looked at the NASDAQ composite index it would look exactly like this chart and so we took a position at 303 on Friday on that one as it broke above this consolidation down here the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, we actually got in that one on Thursday, and it broke above this consolidation down here. So, and that's a nice move. That's a nice solid move there. I'm very happy with how the market is reacting, because 93% of the gains that we've had in March were from the short side trading, and not that I don't like to make the money, but I don't want to see people in the United States of America get punished because the market's going down so bad, badly. I feel bad sometimes, but only for a moment while we while we book all the money. And this is uh, this is the uh, IWF. That's the Russell 1000. Uh, again, we trade it instead of the Russell 2000 because this is a bigger mover and we make a lot more money trading that ETF than we do the Russell. Uh, IJK, I think that's probably aerospace and defense. Yes, it is. And again, an ugly chart, but a real nice move here off the bottom. Okay, so we're very happy to be in IJ. No, that's the mid cap 400. I'm sorry. I apologize. ITA is aerospace and defense. My mistake. There's aerospace. It, again, it's a nice move, too. So we've got two good moves there. Um, now we've got two positions in commodities we've got uso which is the oil fund and again it broke above we got stopped out here and then it broke above this consolidation on thursday so we took a position in it hopefully it'll not uh, i'm all, almost not rooting for that one because that means oil prices are going to go up gas prices are going to go up and you know i'm not happy about that silver this is coming off the bottom that silver is really weak but it it made a nice move here, getting above all this congestion and consolidation here. So it was a real nice move. UNG is another natural gas. We got stopped out of this one for a gain. You're going to see why. 
Uh, so we, we had a nice gain. We made 1300 bucks on this little move here. And uh, it's a really wild one. And, you know, again, you got Biden not shutting down exploration and drilling. He thinks he's going to convert everybody to electric cars. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, folks. I don't mean to get political. It's not wise to do that. But the man is a moron. I'm sorry. He just does not have any clue what is going on in the world. Um, okay, I did want to look at a the S the spy. I think I've got. I want to look at the mountain chart on that so you can see. Yeah, this. So again, there's the spy. It's holding up a little bit better than a Nasdaq, which is, you know, typical. I mean, you got the big the 500 largest companies in the United States or in the world. And so you would expect it to do a little bit better. Last but not least, I would like to look at a heat map. Wouldn't you like to look at a heat map? Well, here we go. Here is a one day performance of the S&P 500. And you can see there is a lot of green on the screen. And you can see the big glams, Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, you name it, they all, all those glams moved. The financials moved. I mean, it really is a very good rally. It's it's very, it's a, a nice rally off the bottom. And, and I hope we have several days or weeks of this. You know, who knows? We follow the market, so it doesn't really matter. If it goes back down, we're going to get out. There is a one-week look at the same thing. Again, a lot of green on the screen. And the last one is the monthly performance. Ooh, that's got some not so good stuff in it. Okay, but I do like to look at uh, the, the forward PE. And you can see that we're still pretty well overvalued on especially these glams. Look at Amazon at 42. We're not growing that fast, folks. So at any rate... That's all I have for this week. Uh, this is Greg Gallagher with uh, G3 Investors. Good luck and good trading.